Hello, welcome to another video and today we're going to be discussing the QL, uh, quadratus lumborum muscle in the lower back or the QL as it's often referred to. I'm going to discuss um, several reasons as to why it constantly gets um, injured or strained or stays in spasms or all sorts of things, basically creating problems but it's really not the muscle itself that's the problem, it's reacting to things that are going on usually coming from the glutes but sometimes the feet and even um, uh, from the shoulder so often like what stirs it up is things like this so like a single leg exercise like this one like a single leg Bulgarian deadlift where basically the emphasis of the exercise is to obviously strengthen the glutes and the hamstrings so the posterior chain on this right leg now if things are going right it'll, it'll work well but if things are going wrong and usually if there's too much stiffness in the in the posterior part of the hip so the glutes themselves might be too stiff in, in order to move you can't actually achieve the the optimal position and you'll see things like this all right so you'll see how my body's kind of twisted around it so now it's going to really compress the ql on this side and excessively lengthen the one on this side so that's obviously a bit too um, so it's round about there and there right so the main part of this is this glute here now either it's too weak or it's too tight or it's weak and tight <laughs> right so sometimes person's a bit sloppy with their movement and then maybe that's why you people blame the core but it may be because the the glute itself couldn't get into that position so the body is moving excessively around it in order to complete the movement uh, now sometimes I might fall that way other times I could fall this way and again that could be a foot problem as well so you know, so you'll see all types of compression and things going on if I just go back and you'll see how like on this side now I'm see I'm compressing this side and it could be so it's very similar to the lateral pelvic tilt problems sometimes you see the compensatory on one side and then it's the non-compensatory on the other side so but really with the same leg all right and and it could be multiple factors but really the common denominator is going to be there's a weakness in here you can't position correctly maybe your brain doesn't understand it maybe you don't have enough stability in the foot maybe all of the above all right but the, the the thing that I'm trying to point I'm making here is this is going to be end up in pain either this side or this one that's getting overstretched um, but it's not the reason for it all right and ironically these type of exercises are the ones that clean it up so then when it's working right so it'll you'll sit right back into the hip as you could see then right as I'm sort of moving there so I'm sitting deep into that hip socket so the femur sitting right in there so now the glutes doing everything it's meant to nothing here changes I could work on my core as much as I want but it, it won't make any difference if I don't have the strength to, to effectively move in this area if I don't have the mobility to get in there I can't just strengthen it either I might have to mobilize it a bit first stabilize it and then strengthen it and then I can apply my core things like pelvic presses and side planks and things like that and they might sort of tighten it up where it needs to but by themselves they'll be useless and again stretching it will be useless if that's all I do so I might ha not have mobility and I might try to restore it but if the reason it's stiff is because it's weak well it's never going to loosen it up <laughs> it's a bit of a paradox and you can see why it's confusing to talk about because the, the solutions can often be very difficult to even get into so you have to use lots of various methods and exercises to do that so Another example where I might see the flaring up is when it's working with more of an overhead movement. So, so this is we like our basic um, squatting press movement, and there's a rotation part to it. So, see when I come down. So right here it's like a squat. All right. So if I just go back, so right there, this is kind of where the person usually gets stirred up. All right, because the the dumbbell itself is applying the compression downwards into that area all right now if I can again if I can't sit back in the hips properly or I don't have the strength to do it my body's gonna like like a scoliosis gonna really twist and compressing so one side's gonna get compressed other side's gonna get lengthened all right and I'm but and usually this person doesn't rotate very well they, that's why they hate rotation things because it can really quickly stir them up um, I just go back again and even on that top position we do on the right hand right on this side you'll see this is where 
uh, if my core is working well, I'm transferring power through the leg up through this region so that I can move the dumbbell straight up. So my, I need that like little slight rotation at the bottom there to be able to generate the spring to come up. And this foot will have to turn through. See how I'm on my toes and the hip come through? So the hip and the thoracic region providing the rotation which you know coming through the core but really transferring through the legs if I'm side flexing on it so if I don't move well and I just side flex because I don't rotate I'm basically just going to compress this side as opposed to twisting it up all right that's why these exercises are really effective at getting rid of it but they're also problematic in learning them all right um, and you'll see on the next one when we do a Turkish get up uh, where I can't rotate I'm really restricted, that's a, a, that really amplifies this. So this is where I do have to side flex. All right, so you see in this position here, I've got the obliques that should be working. And right at this point here, this is where everything can get really strained. Now, this is where the core should be working really tight to keep it tight, but it's really easy, and especially when I go to sit up. So right there. Now, if I don't have good stiffness through the core here because I can't rotate I do have to side flex I'm working in the frontal plane which is what you see with the single leg thing from earlier it's just now I'm in a kneeling position instead of standing um, this is where the QL can really get very quickly pissed off in this m movement but ironically if you would figure it out and get everything working well it won't do that so again the key is if the st hips are too stiff I'm going to always be sacrificing and finding the extra movement through the, through the QL. Look, the oblique might do a bit of it, but I, it's a 360-degree activation here. I can't just have it anterior, or else the dumbbell would come slamming down. I have to have some part of the posterior side contributing to this to keep it all in the middle. And then right at this point where I was standing up and or going down, this is where if, if I'm on the way down, I don't have the strength in this glute, I might side flex my body, which is, again is what you see with the lateral pelvic tilt. Again, I'm going to strain the QL on this side and compress it on this side. All right. So you can see how really the key to all this is the mobilizing of the hips with the strength of the hips. The core is a big part of it, but it's really overrated in terms of how much importance it has. It's always sacrificing itself if there's something wrong going through the, the glutes and the, and the hips themselves. So I hope this um, uh, suitcase carries another one, which we might have a look at as well in a second. So, But this gives you a better sort of clarity as to, like if you're constantly tweaking it or getting spasms or feeling stiff, it's really not that area that's the problem. It's something else that you need to look below it, sometimes above, but usually it's below. And if you can figure that out and really spend the time with it, It'll, you'll stop aggravating it and that core will tighten up and work much faster. So um, we'll have a quick look at the suitcase carry as well because it's another one that actually really uses the QL in a big way. All right, let's have a quick look at that. Okay, so here's a quick look for a video from a guy that from a few years ago who had an issue with his QL um, and through his lower back and this exercise would really amplify it. So. The, the main problem was his, his glute, and you can really see how he rocks side to side. And this video is on my channel where I analyse it um, in more depth. But you can really see when he when he steps, how he keeps like moving, like a like waddling side to side. He just can't control it. All right. So and, it, and all of it was coming from here. Once he was able to effectively strengthen that area, he no longer moved like that anymore. But this is this exercise really does work the glutes and the opposing QL and oblique in a big way. Um, so it's one of the best ways to resolve it, but it, it can be extremely frustrating and problematic in the beginning uh, trying to get it right. All right, But it, it's really quick, e easy to see here how, how he just sort of almost pole vaults over his leg, especially when he gets tired. See that? All right, And, and, and when, when it's working on the good side, it, it doesn't happen at all. all right? So lack of... Hip mobility, lack poor hip extension, which is all being driven by the glutes. Poor stance stability with the glute medius when he's on the stance face. So all of these things um, working together at the same time um, 
you know, which is what they should do, but obviously when there's something wrong, they get corrupted and they compensate, and it's your job to come in and clean it up. So just doing isolated exercises won't, won't finish the job. It might help in the early part, but you have to come back and integrate it into the system to make it work efficiently with its partners who are all contributing to a complicated movement like walking. All right, hence, a lot of those multi-joint exercises we've been showing you recently have a huge part of this in, in it, and that's where a lot of people have problems with them. All right, so anyway, I hope that video clears up a bit about the QL, and if you've got any questions, put them in the comments below.